Hi everyone, I'm Renee and welcome to my channel. Today I have a really cute Christmas cake to share with you. He's an adorable polar bear and perfect for the Christmas season. He's also much easier to make than you might think and I'm gonna show you how, so let's get started. I'm using my chocolate cake recipe today as well as my American crusting buttercream recipe. I'll have both of these recipes linked down below. I'm just using a little buttercream to attach the bottom cake to my cake board. The bottom two layers are seven inches round by about two inches tall. The, the third layer is a six inch round and the last one is gonna be a five inch round. For the buttercream I'm using as a filling, I've flavored it slightly with peppermint as well as put some crushed candy cane pieces in there to make a candy cane filling. It goes really well with the chocolate cake recipe. I'm just continuing to fill and stack my cake layers. For this cake, I'm not too concerned about the top two layers being too heavy for the bottom two layers of this cake. Typically with a cake this tall, you would wanna put a cake board in the middle there. I'm gonna go without because this is a smaller cake, but if you are going to scale up or if it would just make you feel more comfortable, go ahead and add some supports and a cake board in the middle. I'm just neatening up some of this buttercream that's overflowed because we're gonna carve this cake and I wanna be able to see what I'm doing. You wanna make sure that your cake is nicely chilled before we move on to the carving step because it's easier to handle. All we have to do to carve this cake is to trim off the corners because we want this cake to have a nice tall oval or egg shape. So here I'm just trimming the top edge of the top cake so that it will be a nice soft curve. Then continue down the side of the cake to trim off the corners from the other layers so that it's a nice soft transition from cake layer to cake layer. Now I'm just using the remaining candy cane buttercream to crumb coat my cake and then I'll pop this in the refrigerator to chill before doing a final coat of buttercream. Now that the cake has chilled, I am applying my final coating of buttercream, this time just using plain vanilla American crusting buttercream. I don't want to have the candy pieces in there so that I'll be able to smooth this to a nice smooth finish so we can add fondant. After the buttercream has been smoothed, we'll pop that in the refrigerator to chill so it's easier to work with and then cover it with white fondant. Because this is a curved cake, I'm just using a scrap ball of fondant to buff the surface to a nice smooth finish and then trim off the excess. I'm really excited to use this new product by Marvelous Molds, the Rib and Cable Knit Simpress. It's going to give us some awesome knit detail for the hat of the polar bear cake. I'm just dusting a little bit of cornstarch into the mold and then I'm going to tap out the excess so that there's just a very thin coating in there. I'm making the hat red, but I'm gonna to mix together some red, a little bit darker red, and a tiny little bit of white fondant, and I'm just gonna mix this a little bit to marble it. I think that it's just gonna give a little bit of added detail, so it will look like a red yarn that has some color variations to it. So once I've got that all twisted together, I'm going to roll it out to a fairly thick, thickness, maybe an eighth of an inch. It's going to be enough to get into the details of the mold and you just want to make sure it's wide enough to fit the entire mold. Once I've got it laid over the mold, I'm going to very firmly press the fondant into the details of the mold. You need to be very firm with this so that you get a really good impression. Then using a fondant smoother, I'm just rubbing over the edges of the mold. It has a blade in there, so it will cut really nicely and give you a nice clean edge. Just gently rub the fondant smoother until you see the blades come through. Now here's our molded piece with all of that awesome cable knit detail. I'm gonna make three of these sheets so I have plenty to work with for the hat. Now before I apply it to the top of the cake, I'm going to cut out some V shapes from the top of the fondant and this will allow us to bring it together 
at the top to gather it to a slight point without too much added fondant bulk. I'm going to brush on some water as glue and then I'm going to apply our first panel of this knit and I'm going to make sure that I push the top piece of it up and gather those bees so that I can gather a nice point at the top of this hat. Just use a little water where necessary and then push your seams together. You may have to hold it for a second or pinch them, but they should come together and have a pretty seamless look. This is probably the most finicky part of the entire cake, but you're just gonna work your way around the top, adding panels and using your water to glue the seams together and make sure that the top is arranged so that they gather and lay really nicely. This took two full panels and then I had to cut just a little triangle from the last one to fill in at the back of the cake. So I'm just adding that in here, piecing it and making sure that all of the seams are fit nicely together. I'm making a pom-pom for the top of the hat by just poking a bunch of holes into a ball of green fondant. Then I'll make the trim for the hat by just twisting together two ropes of green fondant until they are tightly wound together and then I will flatten it slightly just so that it lays nicely on the cake. Using water as glue, I will just attach the trim to the bottom edge of the hat. Then attach the pom-pom to the top of the hat using a toothpick because it is a fairly heavy ball of fondant. And then I'll go ahead and poke more holes as needed just to finish off the detail here. And that's the hat done. I love the detail of that knit mold. For the feet, I have two discs of white fondant that are the same size, and I'm just using the back of a knife to impress two marks to create three toes. For the hands, I had rolled a big log that I cut in half, and then I'm gonna roll to taper one end of each half. And then I'm gonna mark with the back of a knife again, just one mark to make a thumb, and then shape the hand into a curve. To make the snout, I have a smaller disc of white fondant, and I'm just using a modeling tool to make a line down the middle, almost to the bottom, and then two marks out from the side to make a mouth. The polar bear is holding a candy cane, so to make that I have a thicker rope of white fondant and two skinnier ropes of red fondant that I am then gluing with water to the white fondant. Then I'll twist this together and roll it out so it's nice and smooth. Trim off the edges to neaten them up and form this into the shape of a candy cane. And then you want to let this sit for a little while to set up. Now I can assemble the pieces to bring this polar bear cake together. Starting with the feet, I'm using a little bit of water to attach those. Then I'll add the piece for the snout. I made two balls of black fondant that I flattened for eyes. I made a dent in the top of the snout with my finger and I'll attach a rounded triangle shape for a nose. Then using my cell pin, I'm just stippling either side of the snout for a little more detail. Now I have a candy cane that I made earlier so it would have more time to set up, but I probably could have used a little bit more time or mixed some Tylos into the fondant so it would harden faster. But I used some water to attach it and then ended up pushing a toothpick through so it would hold more securely. But I'm gonna add a hand right over that candy cane and it hides the toothpick perfectly. Just using water to attach it, you might have to hold it for a few seconds so it sticks or use a toothpick if you're having trouble getting this to stay as well. Then attach the other hand to the other side. This one stays a little bit easier because it's got more surface area touching the cake. For some finishing detail on the eyes, I'm adding two tiny balls of white fondant for reflection marks because reflection marks make every cake look cute. 
Using toothpicks, I'm adding some half circles to the top of the hat so this polar bear has some cute little ears. I'm going to give the polar bear some rosy cheeks by dusting on a little bit of carnation petal dust. And I dusted a little bit of that same pink color right on the bottom of the ears to give those a little bit of detail as well. To finish up this cake, I made some cutouts for the pads of his feet. I cut a heart shape and then cut off the bottom tip and rounded the edges. Then made three little equally sized balls of fondant that I flattened a little bit and these will make the paw pattern. Then just attach these pieces to each foot. And that's it. I think this polar bear cake is so adorable. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos. And if you liked this video, here are a couple of other videos I think you might enjoy.